In this video, I want to talk about W. Edwards Deming's eighth deadly disease, uh, which I'm calling energy. Um, and it's actually in addition to his seven deadly diseases, and it's the eighth one's mine. <laughs> so, um, but the, the, the seven deadly diseases Dr. Deming talked about, along with his 14 points, were associated with constancy of purpose, uh, emphasis on short-term profits, profits uh, valuation of performance, uh, merit rating, review, mobility of management, job hopping, things like that, visible uh, management by, by using visible figures alone. And then he had a couple of things in there about uh, lawyers and, uh, you know, product uh, suits, basically, the liability associated with it and uh, also uh, medical care costs. And most of these things still apply today. Um, I maybe have evolved a little bit on uh, things like evaluation performance and merit rating and annual review, but uh, by and large, these seven things are still issues um, at a minimum in the United States, which these were primarily directed towards. Uh, but, you know, the one thing I, I learned from studying uh, Dr. Deming's work over, you know, 30 plus years is um, he was a very dynamic thinker. In other words, you know, he constantly was adjusting his thinking and, you know, often the retort uh, he would get or you would get from him about changing his mind would be, you know, I make no apologies for learning. And I think that's something that we can all live by is that, you know, the, you know life is a constant learning process. And, and what you may have believed 10 years ago may be different today or even yesterday to today. Uh, I find that happen all the time, especially in working with uh, large organizations. But, uh, but, but as someone who studied his work, um, you know, I think he would have something to say about today's world. And I think he would be adding to this list of deadly diseases um, that we have. And so I, I'm generating these playlists of different things, energy being one, uh, and I'll go through and add uh, additional ones that I think that he might be addressing today. And so each of these playlists, obviously energy has a lot under it. So there'll be subsequent uh, videos that, that get into uh, energy and some of the pitfalls and opportunities associated with it. And so uh, let's, let's talk about energy here. Energy, you know, it's key to any economy. It keeps... Uh, the lights on, the refrigerator working, you know, it helps deliver uh, needed products and services. It powers the technology that we use, and, you know, and, so, and really so much more. It's such a key component to everything. It makes the economy run. And, you know, today with the type of inflation that we have, uh, energy is a good a great part of it and it's one of the things that we've learned uh especially or maybe f felt you know from the ukraine russia war you know that this this has highlighted the importance of of energy and you know you look at germany and other countries are really gr coming to grips with this now and you know for germany it's an unforced error they had nuclear plants that they've been shutting down um, we have a previous president that warned about uh, relying on uh, foreign oil uh, and went ignored. And so they're in a tough spot and, and they aren't the only one. You know, people can't, uh, countries can't afford to pay a lot more for energy. And, you know, finding new sources of energy uh, is certainly should be at the forefront of, of what's going on. And we, we seem to be as a globe, you know, in the world, uh, committing the same, 
error that Germany has. And that is, you know, we got all this green climate change, you know, improvement, and it's created new headwinds uh, to energy. In other words, you know, the the headwinds being, you know, the technology isn't fully developed yet. Now, you know, batteries have come a long way for EVs. We've got solar, we got wind, and uh, those actually have a lot of problems because the wind doesn't always blow and the uh, 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 sun doesn't always shine. So we have to have reliable uh, energy in order to make the, the world run and it's one of the things that actually in the United States that we're uh, one of the top uh, uh, nations that as far as energy goes. We have roughly 100 uh, nuclear power plants in the country and, uh, you know, can uh, basically create energy for 70 million plus households in, in the U.S. And, you know, whether it's green or not, I, you know, the, the, obviously, Germany's starting to come to grips with that um, and kind of moving back towards not shutting nuclear plants down until they can find something else because they're actually making the air dirtier by burning coal because they've lost their uh, source of natural gas and and oil you know from this Ukraine war. And so when we look at when I, when I start to to look at this particular uh, uh, issue with regards to climate change and the movement in it. And, you know, we've spent, the U.S. has spent billions of dollars since like 1998 um, in research. And a lot of that research has been funded to prove, you know, that climate change exists. And uh, probably a future video, but, you know, we should be looking for things that counter uh, certain types of arguments. But for this, it doesn't make a lot of sense. That we're like violently arguing over something we, at, at a base level, I think that we all uh, can agree on. And, uh, you know, some of the things that are happening with ESG, where you have uh, forced fossil fuel reju uh, reduction for oil companies. And, you know, some of these things are really nonsensical and, and don't represent what we need in this country today. And so it, it's funny, I, I came across, and I'll, I'll put this up here, but um, a LinkedIn article, and it was probably the one that broke the camel's back for me, which is another research thing, you know, somebody providing data on climate change from 1880 to uh, 2021. And so I wrote in the LinkedIn article, you know, after you know, basically was to promote that, you know, we have this climate change going on and here's the evidence type of thing. You know, my response was, uh, who cares? <laughs> and I said, let me explain. I said, regardless of whether this is a, na a natural uh, cycle, man-made or changes in the operational definitions of data over time, which if you look back at 1880, did we have the same type of measurements there? How were they measuring it? Um, it, it is uh, it is some time to look for what we can agree on. So whether whether man made it or nature made it or you know the data it doesn't make sense over time. What can we agree on? And so I write, you would be hard pressed to find anyone objecting to making the earth greener. So let's start there. Uh, making the plant greener rec will require fossil fuels to mine the materials needed to build the vast electrical infrastructure we need for electric cars. Just putting a date, like Gavin Newsom did, of 2035 out there begs the Deming question <laughs> of by what method? You know, that right now they have rolling blackouts going on in California. And so by what method are they going to all of a sudden magically get to the infrastructure while at the same time objecting to fossil fuels? It, I mean, somebody really needs to sit down and just think logically about this. Um, currently, it takes years to even get a permit to mine the needed materials because of the regulations to make us green. 
uh, it sometimes takes up to a decade to do so. And, you know, th this is from research that I've done uh, from investing in, um, you know, silver mines, lithium, you know, uh, mining lithium, nickel, all of these things that are going to be needed to build the infrastructure. Um, also, the cheapest and greenest energy on Earth is nuclear. Now, I got some pushback on that, on, on this, uh, and that's fine. Um, I, from people I've talked to and articles I've read and engineers especially, which I'll mention in here, uh, that nuclear is one of the best sources. So also the cheapest and greenest energy on earth is nuclear. You will not achieve energy stability with wind and solar alone. You won't, you haven't been able to yet. It's unreliable. And so I'm not saying it, it could be more reliable in the future and certainly the government it has put their money behind or our money behind uh, finding ways to uh, make solar and wind and other things uh, alternatives or renewables, as people would call them. And I have no objection to that, other than I don't particularly like them spending my tax dollars on it without uh, you know, some input or some thinking, I guess, would maybe, might be even better. Um, so also the, the cheapest and greatest energy on Earth is nuclear. You will not achieve energy stability with wind and solar power alone. Nuclear plants are not built overnight either. However, some green promoting people, for example, Germany, have turned their backs on nuclear power and, and some people don't want to actually solve the problem. And I believe that, you know, people want perpetual you know, especially if you're in the research business, you know, I can research whether climate change really happened or not. And it's since there's no, <laughs> never going to be a really good answer uh, for people the, to everyone agree on. It just doesn't make sense to waste more money on this. Uh, it's time to build a plan with the realization uh, we will need fossil fuels to develop uh, what we need for the next 20 to 30 years. Let's not make the mistakes of Germany. And I wrote that. It's had a, a, you know, 104 likes uh, on this per particular thing. And I think people really want to get to uh, a solution. You're gonna always going to have the 5%, you know, nut jobs on each side. People who go out and, you know, lock themselves to tennis nets and uh, people on the other end that say, you know, I, we should never go green. It's just, you know stupid i mean you're gonna have five percent or so of people on each end of that but the 90 percent or 80 to 90 percent of people are going to agree that i'd love to go green that, that you know what what it makes makes us all uh you know looking for new sources of energy it seems like something that we should all be able to agree on and if it's making it greener all the better but <laughs> you can't just Snap your finger, or wait for the pixie dust to come from, you know, uh, Disney World uh, to make it happen. It's going to require fossil fuels. And, and so there's no magical solution. There's only going to be give and take um, associated with these types of things. Um, so that's what I wrote on there. And, 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 you know, my thoughts are that, you know, we can only, you know, mostly all agree on some things. And, and and the the one thing obviously is to make the plant the the world greener, no no problem with that. You've got sixty percent of the world doesn't even have electricity yet, but okay. Um, wind and solar, you know, the, as I mentioned earlier, the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine, and you know EVs are one way uh, th that we're pursuing for cars. Now there's other things that are out there, but obviously EVs now are the hot subject. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, we've got blackouts in, in, in Texas and California and a number of other places. Uh, we need to solve that problem <laughs> before we start worrying about, you know, everybody having an EV. We don't have the infrastructure. It doesn't exist today uh, to, to do those things. And all that's going to create is more stress on the existing infrastructure that we have. So before you start putting dates out there, you better solve the problem of how you're going to get there, or as Dr. Deming said, by what method. Uh, so we're, gonna, we're going to need to, to uh, get lithium and nickel and silver, and we're going to have to mine those fossil fuels. It, I mean, 
<laughs> they aren't going to mind themselves. And and the problem is, is, again, you've got people on the green side, that 5%, on the one side that are blocking mining of these things and it takes forever to get a permit and you know the red headed mud dauber or whatever that we're trying to save uh you know in a particular environment i mean we've got to start getting real about the importance of energy and what it's going to uh, how it's affecting things um and we've spent billions it's amazing as i looked it up you know, upwards of the 40, 50 billion dollars or in more, most likely, in just researching climate change. You know, and with that money, we could have built a number of plants. Now, Bill Gates, who I'm not a huge fan of, but you know, has has a company called Terra Power that's building in Montana a uh, nuclear plant for four billion dollars. You know, if we spent 50 billion on research. We could have built 12 plants while we're arguing over whether climate change is real or not. So I'm kind of I'm kind of done with the subject personally, as you can tell. Um, but uh, energy is an important aspect, and uh, you know there's other there's another alternative that really hasn't been pursued. I only know of one plant in China, of course, uh, that's been built that that uses thorium, which doesn't have the same problems associated with uranium. But, you know, these are the things we're going to have to start looking at. And if we're going to spend uh, money, let's actually take action on something rather than researching it uh, again. Uh, and so wind, solar, nuclear, hydro, and whatever else uh, could we could potentially use for energy, uh, you know, regardless, we're going to need... Uh, fossil fuels for the foreseeable future. And as I mentioned in the article or in the the um, comment that I made, uh, you know, we're going to need it for the, at least the next 20 to 30 years. It's just not going to go away. And we've got to start being pragmatic about some of these uh, solutions that we're coming up with. And so until we take action uh, to solve the problem of energy, you know, I believe that this is the eighth deadly disease. And I think Dr. Deming would be addressing this today. And so that's what I wanted to cover in this first one. And I'll have more things on energy uh, later as well as other subjects. But remember, there is always a better way. Let's find it.